Good morning. Good morning. It is wonderful to see all of you here this morning. We especially want to welcome any visitors or guests who are worshiping with us today. We're glad that you could join us. Uh, would you please take a moment and wave to the people in your general vicinity? If you're close enough, bump that along, I guess. I don't know. This morning we will be celebrating Holy Communion, and to help prepare ourselves for that, we want to prepare in two different ways. The first way is, of course, spiritually. To help us prepare to receive the Blessed Sacrament, we have up on the big screen here uh, the four questions, and let's go over those right now. Do you acknowledge that you are a sinner? Yes. Do you believe that Jesus is your personal Savior? Yes. Do you recognize the true body and blood of Jesus present in and with the bread and wine given and shed for you? Yes. Do you believe that through this meal, God will strengthen your faith to amend your life? Yes. If you answered yes to all four of those questions, you are certainly free to come forward for the sacrament today. When the time comes for the sacrament, we're going to be proceeding the way that we have been for the past several months. Uh, the communicants will come down these side aisles here to receive the bread, come to the middle to receive the wine. We do ask that you please space yourself out in family groups so that we don't have a uh, collision right here in the front of the church. Uh, just take your time, it's okay. Uh, before the sacrament, I will step out to go wash my hands uh, thoroughly, and then we will proceed from there. This morning, we are going to be asking kind of a difficult question, one that's been on probably a lot of people's minds. We probably asked it at some point or another in the past, oh, I don't know, 12 months or so. Is this an apocalypse? Come on, be honest. How many of you have wondered? It's okay. I'm going to put my hand up, too. A few of us have wondered. That's all right. We're going to talk about it because here's the thing. Here's a little spoiler for the sermon. It is. It is the apocalypse. It's an apocalypse, and we're going to talk about what that means exactly. But first, let's rise and join our voices together as we sing, Oh, that I had a thousand voices. Spirit. 
Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess to you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. For that reason, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy, seeking and imploring your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. O most merciful God, who has given the only Son to die for us, have mercy upon us, and for his sake forgive all of our sins. By your Holy Spirit, increase in us true knowledge of you and of your will, and true obedience to your word, so that by your grace we may come to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has given has, has mercy upon us and has given his only Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives all of our sins. To those who believe in him, he gives the power to become the children of God and promise them his Holy Spirit. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, to us all. Amen. We come together in prayer. Almighty God, you have given us so many incredible promises. Protect us from the forces of darkness. Help us to live as children of the light, so that your love and light may shine brightly within us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And we now confess our Christian faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. <clears throat> I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, Light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood, the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you all. You may be seated.
and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you in both body and soul unto life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we give thanks to you for feeding us with your body and blood in this holy sacrament. May we treasure the forgiveness that it gives. May it strengthen our faith and our commitment to you. May it help us become more and more like you in our lives as we go out from this place. May it motivate us to serve both you and each other, reflecting the love that sent you to the cross to save us from our sins. In your name we pray. Amen. Having been fed with Jesus' body and blood and with and under the bread and wine, we continue to feed our faith with the hearing of God's word. Reading for this Sunday is from the book of 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5. Now, brothers and sisters, about times and dates, do not need to write to you. You know very well the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying peace and safety, destruction will come on them suddenly, as labor pains on a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness, so that this day should surprise you like a thief. You're all children of the light and children of the day. We do not belong to the night or the darkness. So then, let us not be like others who are asleep, but let us be awake and sober. Those who sleep, sleep at night. Those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, bring on faith and love as a breastplate, and the hope of salvation as a helmet. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. Encourage one another and build each other up, just as in fact you are doing. This is the word of the Lord. and to another one bag, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received five bags of gold went at once and put his money to work and gained five bags more. So also the one with two bags of gold gained two more. But the man who had received one bag went off, dug a hole on the ground, and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five bags of gold brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with two bags of gold also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two bags of gold. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man who had received one bag of gold came. Master, he said, I know that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. 
So I was afraid and went out and hid your gold in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. His master replied, you wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed? Well, then you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. So take the bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has ten bags. For whoever has will be given more, and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken away from them. And throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. At this time, I will be coming around to gather any prayer requests you may have. And during this time, we're also going to be checking in with our online children's ministry, the Faith Roots video for this week, to see what's going on there. And I'll go around and collect the prayer requests. Children's Ministry part of the Timothy webpage if you want to find out what happens with Gordy and the dog. Now we bring our prayer concerns to God because God promises to not only hear us but to answer our prayers according to his good and gracious will. In addition to those prayer concerns that are ongoing that we share every week, we also want to include prayers for God's healing grace for Nancy Otto. Uh, the mother-in-law of Shelley and George Corum's son, who is fighting cancer. 
We also want to pray for Gloria Skelton, Shanna Hansen's aunt, who was taken by ambulance to a Wichita hospital and admitted for a rare disease. And also prayers for Joyce Haggerty, who has a herniated disc and is in severe back pain. Now, if you know the people that were just mentioned or any of the people that are listed in our weekly prayers, we want to encourage you to reach out to them with God's own love, with a phone call, uh, by sending a card, by letting them know that God loves them and so do we. After each petition, I will end with the words, Lord, in your mercy, please respond by saying, Hear our prayer for Jesus' sake. Please rise. Heavenly Father, your love and grace for us is revealed through your Son's death and resurrection. And now you call on us to share that same love and compassion with everyone we know. Fill us with your Spirit so that we may be living conduits of your love. May your grace overflow from our lives into our community that your presence may be revealed through us all. Lord, in your mercy. We are Jesus name. Lord Jesus Christ, you revealed your love and compassion for those in need during your earthly ministry. And so we pray that you would be with those who are struggling today, whether those struggles come from health issues, financial stresses, relationship problems, or mental or spiritual difficulties. We especially lift up to you today, Nancy, Gloria, and Joyce. Be the health and healing of those who need it. And help us to rejoice when we see the many ways that you continue to bless our lives every day. Lord, in your mercy. We are prayer for Jesus' sake. Holy Spirit, you reveal the truth of our faith through the preaching and teaching of God's word. Help us to be good students, taking to heart the great truths we find. But then fill us with your presence that we may live out our faith in our day-to-day -day lives, revealing who we are and who we belong to through our thoughts, words, actions, and attitudes. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer for Jesus' sake. Holy Trinity, we pray that you would reveal your plans for our congregation to us. We entrust our future and our ministry to your guidance and priorities. Grant us your wisdom and understanding so that we as a whole may work together to pursue your ideals and wishes. Help us to prioritize sharing the good news of what Jesus has done for us with those who need to hear it, not only today, but into the next generation as well. Lord, in your mercy. We are prayer for Jesus' God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we thank you for the way that you reveal yourself to us through the means of grace. We especially thank you for the blessings of Holy Communion which we have received today. May Jesus' body and blood in, with, and under the bread and wine not only continue to work forgiveness within us, but strengthen our faith for whatever lies ahead. We entrust all these things to you in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated as we join our voices together in singing, Loving Christ is Strong and Living.
and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. So, this is the question I want to start off with. What do you think of when you think of the term apocalypse? What is it that pops into your head when you hear this word? The end, the end right? The end of times. We think of destruction. We think of battles. We think of the end of the world. Society falling apart, crumbling into ruin. Although if you're like me, the second thing that you think of is a big purple bad guy. This guy. That one's just for me. Right? But most people, when they think of apocalypse, think of the end of the world, the end of society, everything falling apart. As a matter of fact, it's even given rise to a specific type of genre in books and movies. How many of you have heard of the post-apocalyptic books? A few of you? This is usually a story that's set in a world where Society has fallen apart. The world as we know it has ended because of something like, oh, I don't know, a robot uprising or zombies. Those have been really popular lately. Or in some cases, and I hate to say it, a pandemic. <laughs> but the world has come to an end and now the survivors have to try to piece their lives back together again because the world has come to an end. Now, like I asked at the beginning of the service, is 2020 the apocalypse? Mm. We maybe have wondered about that over the past several months, right? I mean, 2020 has been absolutely crazy. I tried thinking through everything that we've dealt with in the past 10 and a half months. It's a little hard getting back into the before time, but remember there was that almost war with Iran? And then all of Australia was basically on fire at one point. And then, of course, in March, we have the pandemic, which shuts everything down and sends everything into chaos. Then we have the racial tensions that erupted throughout the country. And then we have, oh, I don't remember, what was it, murder hornets? And Alex Trebek dies? And then we get into the most rancorous election season that I think we've had in recent memory. And anybody else's blood pressure going up right now just talking about it? I mean, as we look at it, this world feels like it's just spinning out of control. Like this year is constantly trying to one-up itself from month after month after month. That each time we finish another month, I expect to hear an announcer say, Welcome to the next level of Jumanji. And we're just going to have to keep on going. So it's really tempting to maybe look at 2020 and say, is this the end of the world? Have we made it into the end times? Is things going to end? After all, when we look in the Bible, we see these promises over and over and over again that Jesus is going to return. But before he returns, things are going to get difficult. We even hear this promise in today's epistle reading from 1 Thessalonians, when Paul wrote this, You know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying peace and safety, destruction will come on them suddenly as labor pains on a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. We look at passages like this one all throughout the Bible, we cobble them together, and we start to wonder, is this it? Well, now that I'm looking at this verse, I can say with absolute confidence, probably not. Because, I mean, think about it. Has 2020 been acting like a thief in the night at all? Has anybody been saying peace and safety lately? So while it may not be the apocalypse, I do think it is an apocalypse. And here's the reason why I say that. We have to get at what the word apocalypse actually means. In English, the word apocalypse has come to mean, you know, a big battle, the end of the world, everything falling apart. But that's not actually what it meant in the original Greek. In Greek, the word apocalypse meant revelation. Yeah, just like the last book in the Bible. A 
revealing of something. The way to think about it is it's a drawing back of the curtain to reveal what's behind there. In other words, if you've ever been to a play, and at the beginning of the play, the curtains part and open up, guess what? You've seen an apocalypse. You've seen a revelation. You've seen what's behind there. That's what an apocalypse is. And that's what I mean when I say that 2020 is an apocalypse. Because it reveals something. And what does it reveal? Well, I think 2020 has revealed a lot about us. Who are we? What has it revealed about us? Well, think about how we've been responding to things that have happened throughout this year. When COVID-19 broke loose and upended everything, how did we respond to it? Did we respond with care and concern? Or did we focus on ourselves? As people cried out for justice earlier this year, how did we respond? Did we listen? Or did we judge? As the political season geared up again, how did we respond to people who were on the other side of the aisle from us? Did we remember that we're all in this together? Or did we respond with harshness, judgment, and insults? You want me to keep going? Because we don't like what I mean, we don't like those answers, do we? How many of you are thinking, okay, that's it, I'm out of here? It's all right, I understand. It's a harsh thing when we look at ourselves like that. It's like looking in a mirror. I gotta be honest, when I got up this morning and stumbled into the bathroom and looked in the mirror, I said, really? This is what I've got to work with today, awesome. I was not happy at what I saw. And this is what often happens to us when we encounter an apocalypse, a revealing of who we are. We look at ourselves and we realize what? We are a mess. We have not responded the way we should. We do not respond the way that God wants us to. It reveals how broken and sinful we really are. As a matter of fact, it reminds me of something that we've talked about in Youth Confirmation this last year, and I've seen a few of you in the congregation right now. Pop quiz. No, I'm not actually going to make them do this. But maybe I'll open it up for everybody. This year we've been talking about the three uses of God's law. You guys remember that from your days in confirmation? Okay, I've seen a lot of people look down like, don't make eye contact with him because we don't want to get called on. Specifically the second use. Does anybody remember what the second use of the law is? It's a mirror. It's a mirror. The hint's right there. Because when we look into God's law, what do we see? We see our sin. We see how we've broken God's law. We see how we haven't lived up to his expectation of us. We see how broken and lost we really are. Whether that mirror is this year, whether that mirror is God's word, we realize how lost and fallen we actually are. Are. And that's a problem because if we are just on our own, lost and sinful and broken, what does that mean? We're done. We're condemned. Hell awaits us. But thankfully, thankfully, that's not what God wants for any of his creation. That's what Paul talks about in the reading for today. Think about what he said. He said, God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. Or to put it another way, 
Jesus is an apocalypse. Because Jesus is a revelation. Jesus is a revelation of how God feels for us. And what does it reveal? That God loves us? That he loves us so much that he sent his son into this world to die on the cross to save us from our sins. That is what Jesus reveals to us about who God is and how he sees us. People that he loves so dearly that he would rather send his son to death on the cross rather than lose a single one of us. He wants each and every one of us to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ so that we won't have to suffer wrath, but instead we can know the peace and security that comes from being his children. That is what Jesus reveals to us about who God is and what he's all about. And because that's who Jesus is, that means that we have safety and security and peace of mind that overcomes everything else. It's like what we read in one of my most favorite Bible verses of all times. I know, pastors aren't supposed to play favorites when it comes to the Bible. But this is one of my favorites. Top five. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. That means no matter what this world or life or anything can throw at us, it doesn't change God's love for us. And you notice how I put one phrase in red? That's because... That basically means fill in the blank. Whatever it is you're facing, put it in that list. A global pandemic can't separate us from the love of God that is in Christ. Another election season that just won't end, that can't separate us from the love of Christ. Murder hornets, Remember them? That cannot separate us from the love of Christ. Whatever it is, it cannot separate us from Christ's love. And that transformative love now fills us and overflows from us into the world around us. Because while we wait for the time when Jesus will come back, God calls on us to be children of light. To be people who burn brightly to the rest of the world. To show them what God's love is all about. So that God's love will be revealed in us. And through us. That's why Paul says in the reading for today, Let us not be like others who are asleep, but let us be awake and sober. Let us keep our eyes open to see the world for what it is and see other people for who they are. People that God dearly loves. People that Jesus died for. He goes on to say, since we belong to the day, let us be sober, putting on faith and love as a breastplate and the hope of salvation as a helmet. Putting on that full armor of God so we can take a stand on the truth that we know, the truth that has been revealed to us through Christ. Holding on to the faith and the love that is ours through God. And then we encourage one another and build each other up just as in fact you are doing. That means that while the world may fall apart, while the world may be an apocalypse in the conventional sense, what do God's people do? We stand in the midst of the mess with God's own love, with his grace and mercy. We lift others up. We pull them out of the mess 
we dust them off and we let them know how much we love them because of how much God loves them. We build each other up and reveal in our lives God's own love. Or to put it the way that Paul says, well, not, sorry, I got ahead of myself. <laughs> is this an apocalypse? Well, yeah, it is. It's a time when God's love can be revealed, when it can be unveiled, when the curtain can be drawn back and people can see the truth. And the way they see that truth is when we live as children of light. When we let God's love shine brightly in our lives so that others can see it and others can come to know who God is and what he has done for them. So let's pull back the curtain. Let's turn on the light. Let's shine into love. Amen? Amen. Now may the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding keep our hearts and our minds in true faith and life everlasting. Amen. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. First of all, we want to thank you for joining us today uh, for worship. Uh, we also want to thank you for your continued support of the ministries here at Timothy during this, and I know everybody's sick and tired of hearing this phrase, during this very unusual time. But we really do appreciate the way that you have continued to support Timothy through your offerings. If you have brought an offering today, you can drop it off in the baskets on your way out the door. And again, we thank you for helping us continue to well, both literally and metaphorically, keep the lights on here so that we can shine brightly with God's own love in Blue Springs and the surrounding communities. Just a couple of announcements before we get going. First of all, Timothy's Middle School Youth Ministry is sponsoring a free movie night tonight to enjoy Evan Almighty and the Artie Mize Family Life Center. Space is limited, so please pre-register on the student ministry page of the Timothy website. Also, Thanksgiving Eve services are coming up very soon. Can you believe it's already Thanksgiving? Holy cow, it feels like it was just Christmas. Oh, anyway, that's not the point. The point is, Thanksgiving Eve service is Wednesday, November 25th at uh, 5.30 p.m. That is the only service we will be having that night here at the Artie Mice Sanctuary. The Offerings Fund, Timothy's Emergency Assistance Fund for 2021. We want to thank you for your strong support, as always. And finally, we want you to save the date. Timothy Lutheran School is inviting you to save the date for their annual fundraising auction on Saturday, February 20th. More details are to come. And so now we go out from this place to reveal God's love to those around us to shine brightly with the grace that God has revealed to us through Christ. So let's rise and join our voices together as we sing, Brothers and Sisters in Christ. Amen. 